What's up everybody? Welcome back to another Pokemon ROM hacking tutorial. You guys really liked the last longer in-depth tutorial I created, so we're back with another one, and this time I'll show you how to make awesome cutscenes using Hex Maniac Advance. <coughs> the big focus here will be on the apply movement command as well as moving the camera object. This tutorial will also help you get an understanding of tile scripts which are used to trigger these events. Let's get started! So you guys see here I'm in Route 1, and I want to create a script of two trainers who are battling and blocking the path until the player completes another objective. This objective will just be simply talking to an NPC in Pallet Town. Then I'm going to want one of these two trainers to battle you. You guys can see here I added my NPCs, and if you look to the left, none of them have their own script address because all the dialogue and actions will be done through a tile script, which I will drag into place. The next thing we need to do here is add a trigger variable, which luckily Hexmanic Advance can generate an unused one for you. Now we'll hit the plus icon on the script address and the program will find free space for you to create your script. Now with our script created here, the first command I'm going to enter here is an if flag set command, which is what we'll use to trigger an event once we talk to a previously mentioned NPC in Pallet Town. We'll go ahead and press the plus flag icon here and it'll create a new unused flag for us. Then we'll put some arrows here and type in section 1. We'll create section 1 later after we make the NPC that will trigger it. Now here's the fun part, we're going to create a camera that moves upwards for the cutscene of the two trainers battling. We'll start with a special command here, and type in spawn camera object right there. Now we're going to use the move dot camera command, and if I hit space here it's going to make an auto pointer where we can enter our own data. Now the camera operates just like regular NPCs do, so I'm just going to make it walk up twice. Now we don't want the script to continue until the camera moved up, so we're going to use a wait movement command and type 127, which is the NPC ID number for the camera itself. Now I like to make my NPCs jump while they're yelling at each other, so I'm going to make May here on the right jump and say some dialogue. To do this, we need to check her ID number at the left here so we can apply the movement to her. So next here, we're going to use apply movement, and then we're going to type 1 for her ID number, and then hit space to auto create pointer data. Now hit enter and put a left bracket, and we'll make her jump in place facing left. Of course, there's a whole giant list of apply movement data to make the NPCs do certain actions, so feel free to play around with it a little bit and just try a bunch of different things. Now we're going to make her say some dialogue. For cutscenes triggered by a tile script, I like to use the message box default command because if you use the other message box commands like message box NPC, it can make your player face in directions you don't want them to. I also like the message box default command because the box will only disappear if you use the close on key press command, so it's almost like the script pauses until the player presses the A button. Just like with the apply movement, we can press space and this auto pointer will pop up, and we can enter data the same way, just this time we're using text instead of raw commands. After she says her dialogue, our next command will be close on key press, which like I said earlier will continue the script after the A button is pressed. Now this is a great spot to save and test it in the game. Alright, so let's trigger the event by walking on the tile script. Looks good so far. So after she says this, I want her Yamper to attack the Shroomish. This means it's back to the Apply Movement command. The Yamper is ID number 5, so we'll do Apply Movement 5, and then in the brackets we'll enter the data, same as before. I want Yamper to jump two tiles to the left, then slide two tiles back to its original spot and face left. And we'll finish with a Wait Movement 5. Now testing it in-game, you're going to see that Yamper's movement looks good, but the Shroomish just stands there in place, so let's change that. Now if we added Shroomish's apply movement after Yamper's wait movement command, then the Shroomish wouldn't react until Yamper's already moved back in place. I want Shroomish to jump at the exact same time Yamper lands on it. So what we're going to do is Shroomish's apply movement before the wait movement command. Its ID number is number 6. Now if I make Shroomish jump right away, it's going to activate before the Yamper hits it, so what we're going to do is add a delay. Now you see we have several options here for the delay command, the lower numbers obviously being the quickest. Here I recommend just trying different delay numbers and picking which one will work the best. Let's start with 16 to try. Then I'm going to do jump in place facing right. Now we just have to test it like we normally do. It looks like the Shroomish jumps a little bit before the Yamper, so we have to increase the delay just a tiny bit. I'm going to add delay 8 right after the delay 16. That looks a little bit better. Okay guys, from here on I'm going to repeat similar steps. Brendan on the left here is going to say some dialogue and Shroomish will attack. We're going to use the same apply movement and message box default commands. The cutscene is looking good. 
You guys see here when the Shroomish got hit, it just jumped in place facing right. But when the Yamper got hit, I made it spin in a circle by using walk in place fastest, which kind of adds a little bit of an animation to it. Now that the two Pokemon attacked each other, I want the camera to move back down to the player while the trainers continue to block the path until we complete the next event. So what we're going to do is the move.camera command again, and its data field will just walk down twice. But I want the player to also walk back down at the same time, so the ID number for the player is 255. Now since I have the player walking down once, I also need the camera to walk down three times instead of two. Now we'll test it once again. Now see here the player can run around while the camera's still in place. That's because we forgot to despawn the camera object. So we just got to use a special command once again. And this time type in remove camera object. Now the script is behaving exactly how I want it. Booyah! Now one thing I just did was put the apply movement 255 before the move camera. That way the player and the camera kind of walk down at the same time. Now it's time to create the event that will set the flag at the beginning of our script which will trigger a new action. We're going to create a very basic script, and since I used an NPC template in Hexmanic Advance, the script is already generated, so I'm just going to edit it. By default, they just say I'm an NPC, but we'll make our own dialogue. Now, what's really cool in Hexmanic Advance is when you're typing dialogue and your sentence is too long to fit in the text box, this little green underline is going to show up to tell you you cannot type there. Now that I have our dialogue made, we're going to do a set flag and type in 0x0021, which is the flag that we have at the beginning of the other script. Now since the if flag set command will send you to section 1, we're now going to go create section 1. Just go to the bottom of the script, type section 1, and colon. Now in this section of the script, I want to make it so May beats Brendan in their battle, and then he walks away while she comes up and challenges the player. I'm going to add an object with a Pokeball sprite and make it invisible for now, and this is what we're going to use to make the trainers recall their Pokemon. Alright, so we'll start with a special command to spawn the camera object and make it move two spaces up again. Now I'll make her Yamper attack the Shroomish while she says some more dialogue. Now I want to make Brendan recall his Shroomish and make it look like it goes in his Pokeball. I'm going to start with a Cry command with Effect 2 to make it sound like it fainted, then use Wait Cry which will not continue the script until the full sound played out. Now I want the Shroomish to disappear while the Pokeball appears really quickly in its spot. So I'm going to use the Move Sprite command to move the invisible Pokeball to the X and Y coordinates of the Shroomish. So I use Move Sprite, and the Pokeball's ID is 6, and then 11 and 29 are the X and Y coordinates. Now we'll use Apply Movement to the Shroomish, and use the Set Invisible Raw command, and then Apply Movement to the new Pokeball Sprite to Set Visible with the Sound command with the Pokeball sound effect. And for the Pokeball, after setting Invisible, I also added two Delay 16s to it, and then set it back to Invisible. Now we'll test it in the game. Alright, so we'll talk to the NPC to set the flag, and now it should trigger the Section 1 event. Awesome, looks good. You guys couldn't hear it because I have the game muted, but the Shroomish cry and the Pokeball sound did play out. Now I'm going to add some dialogue for Brendan and make him walk away using the message box default and apply movement in the same way we've already been doing. And this is while May recalls her Yamper, and this time I'm going to use the move sprite on the invisible Pokeball sprite to the coordinates of the Yamper. Okay, now here's going to be another fun part. We're going to have May walk up to the player and start a battle. First, I'm going to do apply movement to her and bring the camera back down. Then we'll use the special command and remove the camera object. Now we're going to use a command called single battle continue silent. This command will initiate a trainer battle with before dialogue, after battle dialogue, and then send you to another section upon winning the battle. The first parameter is the trainer itself and we'll choose May here. Then I'm going to hit space twice to have the auto pointer data for the text. Then for the win script, I'm going to use section 2. Now we'll hit enter and add some brackets for the text data. So you can see here in the brackets, I have the before battle dialogue and after battle dialogue. Before we finish the final section of the script, let's edit the trainer data so May has her yamper. We'll go to the home menu of Hexmanic Advance and press trainers to edit the trainer data. Now we can search for May up here. And I'll edit her team to have a yamper. Of course, feel free to edit any of the previously existing trainers or add your own at the bottom. Alright, let's finish the script. We'll make May say some final dialogue and, just for fun, let's make her give you an item before walking away. After her first part of the dialogue, I'm going to use an NPC item command and we just enter the item we want and the quantity. I'm going to choose an EXP share for the gift. Now we'll make her walk away with one last apply movement command. Now the next thing we gotta do is permanently remove the NPCs and make it so the tile script can no longer be triggered when we walk on it. 
I'm gonna use the hide sprite command on all the NPCs, which in this case were 1 through 7, except number 2 because there's already another NPC on the map with that ID. Next we gotta set a flag for the event completion, which Hex Manic Advance can make an unused one for us. Now I have to apply this flag to all the NPC objects in the map, so setting this flag will completely remove them. The final step we have to do is change the tile script's trigger variable to something else, as number 0 is the default. Let's do set var, 4034, and then number 1. And if everything worked out, if you step on this tile after defeating May, nothing will happen. Okay, let's save it and test it in the game. Okay, so this is the first script that plays. The same thing will always happen until we set the flag that was in Pallet Town. Now let's talk to the Hex Maniac NPC. Now that that flag is set, let's head back. Alright, and let's start the battle with May. And there she has her Yamper that we edited earlier. And there's the dialogue she says when we beat her. And there's the XP share we gained. And as you guys can see, the text goes off the text bubble here on the bottom right, so I just had to add one more line. Now she walks away like normal. And if I run on the tile script again, nothing happens. Even if I leave the town and go back, it shouldn't still happen. Now we'll save the game and restart. And now on this save file, that will still never trigger again. Now I also think it's good to test the script when losing to the trainer battle because the script should not continue. Alright, so we lost the battle, so let's go test it out once again. And that's good, it looks like everything continued just as normal again. Now, really quick tip here, you can see when my player runs into the tile script, he freezes in the running animation, and if you want to get rid of this, just do apply movement 255 and face up. Bingo! I really hope a lot of you were able to learn something today. Scripting cutscenes like this can really flesh out the story of your ROM hack, and you can get really creative with the interactions with NPCs. You can use cutscenes like this for important boss trainers, legendary encounters, or something to further the plot of your ROM hack story. As always, if you have any questions, leave a comment down below, and I highly recommend checking out the official Hex Maniac Advanced Discord for ROM hacking help, as well as my own YouTube channel Discord. The links will be in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.